You're gonna behave and not make too many noises and stuff. Aye. Not too many. Yes, we agree. <laughs> With your interest in the history of the panorama and the panorama spectacle, okay. developed by an Irishman, yeah, in 1787, I think that this painting. As far as I've, I mean, I've been doing some research on panoramas, and of course, you come across this Irish uh, Robert Baker, 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 Baker yeah. who uh, patented. He was the first to patent the panorama in the 1787s or 93. Or Thanks. <laughs> for the foot or the date? <laughs> and for the deco. He, uh, uh, he was the first to patent. Uh, what's interesting about this idea of a patent is that it shows you it was conceived of as a technical innovation, not as an artistic medium or a way to, uh, not as a concept for an artist or something like that. Yeah. So it was understood in the same way as the steam machine or mm -hmm. electricity or something like that, the invention of a 360 degree painting mm. or image. Uh, and I think that's interesting. There were a number of people working on similar things, Germans also, and people from the Netherlands, and, and but, but Robert Barker was the Hi. first one to patent it. Um, and there was quite some debate about the artistic quality of these events Yeah, exactly, as well. exactly. Yeah. They were teaching tools, Yeah. Uh, and moments I of spectacle and tourism, or actually art. Yeah, I think there was, there were of course, this critique of it that it's not art, it's it's more kind of entertainment Hi. thing, or it's a, also, by many people, it's considered as the first visual mass medium, mm. uh, which is interesting because, it, of course, there were theater and, and uh, music and, and all kinds of storytelling and stuff like that. But purely visual, it was the first instance where you actually, that, where it would be discussed as a mass medium. People would queue up for hours. It was really visited by okay. masses of people who would say, this is not real art, it's not you know, it's not difficult enough. It's not something that takes intellectual or aesthetical challenge. It's just giving you the world as it is, as entertainment. Mm. While others, of course, were, were enjoying it immensely and just seeing it as, as a new thing that would basically wrap the spectator in a world, surround you in another world, which is, instead of traveling, you can go and see another place by entering the space. Mm. I think it's interesting that today we have, of course, uh, Omnimax and Avatar and gaming environments where you where you sort of uh, navigate yourself, and this was this was exactly that desire to create a world for the spectator. Mm. And uh, there's a there's a nice little Godard reference because Godard explains cinema as a place you go together with others to be alone. You sit, you experience the movie as a subjective relationship or as a relationship between you and the main characters or whatnot, but with a lot of people in the same room. And television, he says, is a place, uh, is, is something you do alone to, to feel together with many. Because mm. you, you know there's many people sitting in all these rooms and the next day you go to work, you discuss the program from yesterday mm. or the news or something like that. So there are two different relationships between many and singular as a, as a spectator. And I think uh, the panorama was the first painting or just imagery that that very very precisely uh, and purposely addressed many people at the same time. Any kind of normal perspective painting or drawing is of course made as seen from one point. So to experience that perfectly, there would be one privileged point mm. from where that perspective fits. Mm. And the same with the frame painting or, or, or anything. And the panorama is interesting because it it has so you know it has many. Uh, it has it has the whole surroundings, and instead of one vanishing point, basically the horizon consists of a of a of a number of vanishing points. Mm. That is technically incredibly difficult. And what you found in your research is that also very few of these original panoramas exist. And yeah, they, they, yeah, they were huge canvases, and and they were traveling, mm. uh, going to different countries. And the interesting thing is that very often they depicted a landscape or a city and they would travel around to show people these landscapes or cities. So it was also, in a way, a predecessor of tourism, not only a predecessor of cinema, mm -hmm. which is how I came to it, but also of tourism, because it was what sort of primed this idea that it would be amazing to go to this hilltop and look out over the horizon. Exactly. So you, and you visited four different panoramas in Europe and filmed the, the center of these cycloramas, the, the yeah, circular yeah, buildings yeah. with the panorama painted on the inside, but from an offset position. Yeah, I chose to, what I was interested in was not only the panorama, not only the painting, but also this uh, 
what I would call the, the choreography of the spectator or the, the architecture that, that addresses and produces a specific spectator, and that is that spectator who's not alone, the many vanishing points, so to speak. They all refer to this platform in the middle. So I was interested partly in the imagery that's around and that architecture in the middle. Uh, and I placed my camera uh, in the panoramas off center so that I would partly scan the, the, the imagery, the, the paintings. They're not all paintings, some of them are actually Photoshop prints and models and stuff like that. The, there's one that's only five years old and it's made from Photoshop and stuff like that. Very interesting. Yeah, it is. Um, uh, I would place my camera off center so that part of, of my footage is scanning the image mm -hmm. and then slowly coming in onto the platform so that it also scans. The, the spectators in that mm -hmm. space and, and kind of reads the architecture. Describes the apparatus. Exactly. Of doing. exactly. Um, and watches people, observes people that exactly. they participate in. Because I think that's, that's part of what's interesting about these panoramas is that people came to see something together. Mm. And, and both in terms of in relation to cinema and tourism, mm. and that, that you go somewhere to, to experience that together and have that. Um, this idea of tourism, you also spoke earlier about. Uh, the idea of the individual becoming the camera or the lens. Exactly, yeah. By going there, by traveling, yeah. by getting on yeah. a uh, Ryanair flight and you know, participating in that, but also by oscillating around a room yourself in these quite massive panoramas. Yeah. yeah, I think part of what's interesting about panorama is also that they really introduce this idea of the world as an image, or an image as the world, or several images as the world, and that it was my interest to try to to relate that to tourism or conflate that with this way that we travel, we carry out, I mean now we make fun of tourists who travel with their cameras and take pictures of everything, but it's really also a way of, of collecting your scene, collecting the fact that you've seen this and that yeah. through images and, and thus compiling and mapping, creating a world for yourself with images. Mm. Uh, and I'm not only talking about tourists photographing, I'm just talking about image production in general. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the, the voiceover in, in my piece is also people discussing television and their relationship to an image. Uh, the quest, there's a very interesting question about every image, I think, which is, are you in it? And if you're in it, why or why not? <laughs> if you're not in yeah, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's thoroughly scripted and acted with the voiceover. And of course, I'm partly pretending that it could be people, that we could be overhearing audiences, but also there are some absurd or, or sort of non realistic uh, tricks to the voiceover. Uh, what I did, I scanned several panoramas that are all shown in one yeah. long go in, se in the rounds down long in this. Moving. I exactly. Film. My, my film is, is, my projector is moving slowly, mm -hmm. constantly moving, turning around slowly, which my camera also did, constantly moving and turning around. And, and the idea with that was to, to create a situation where in, my inst in the installation we did, this circular installation, you would, you would suggest that there is a space present constantly, but you can only see the part that the projector is, is sort of lighting up, or mm -hmm. sort of, uh, because since my camera was moving and the projector is moving similarly, things stay almost put on the wall. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I filmed several panoramas and they're all slowly being shown here. So in that sense, several panoramas are present mm -hmm. at the same time. They're sort of layered on top of each other. And it could also be that, that doubling or tridupling, quadrupling, I mean, there's actually no, oh, there's three down here now. It could be that space which has three panoramas in that my voiceovers are in, mm. which is partly the space that the spectators also are in. But exactly. but they speak as if all three are present all the time. They're sort of weaving in. Mm. They're talking also about the horizon, about television, and about being in an image or not. Mm. And of course, very literally, if you're surrounded 360 degrees by a canvas, are you in the image? You are inside. You can't get out, so yeah. to speak. Right.